the quarterback for the seer of seers, the man who told us that Baker Mayfield was the right man for the Browns nailed last it. year. Boom, nailed it. The one and only Greg Cosell. Greg, how are Nathan, you? Nathan, what's happening? What's happening I'm, with I'm you? Nathan, I'm very hungry. I haven't really eaten anything. We have not eaten either. We're going, we're both, we're holding on. Seeing you makes us less hangry. Oh, but we I could be, it. we could be getting there. So how, how are you doing? And how's, uh, you know, <laughs> this combine and shaping up to you? It seems a little different to me. And maybe it's because the Browns don't need a quarterback, so it feels different. But it just seems like a little different uh, of you a buzz stop here. stop for a second and, and, and just savor the words that you just said that's all the browns don't need a quarterback <laughs> it I is mean, savored that, that, you said that sort of matter of factly yeah but it's not really a matter of fact comment <laughs> it has not been no it's, it's not been one that's been possible <laughs> no for, no yeah, so uh, a long so time you got to kind of savor yeah. that statement cherish it and yeah, cherish yeah. the freedom from it the freedom i know from it. i know yeah so well, no baker I, I watched every snap of his this year and uh i thought he played really well i mean you know obviously he had some moments which you know, I, I think it was was it against Houston where he threw the three picks yep, in, the in the first, first half, half. Yep. and two of them came against cover two, and he just didn't see it. You know, he didn't read it, and those are the kinds of things you learn as a rookie. You know, you just uh, – but but I, I, he plays with conviction. You know, he – Yes, he, he does everything with yeah, conviction. He's very <laughs> compact. He throws the ball extremely well. He's a twitchy kid with really good movement, but he's not a runaround guy, even though he's capable of getting out of the pocket. Um I thought, you know, for a rookie, he, he, and this is not an X and O comment, but he looked the part. You know, he looked like he belonged. You know, he he was not overmatched. No, he no, certainly he, was not. He, he was not. Greg, when did you, as we go back to last year's process, and now we have the advantage of seeing a, a rookie season of Baker Mayfield. And, yeah. And, and we have it. At, at what point in your an assessment of him this time a year ago did you come to the conclusion that that's the guy? Well, here's the way I saw it. I don't get to see a ton of college football because Saturday is the only day during the NFL season when I'm a semi-normal human being. And, you know, I do stuff with, uh, you know, family stuff and whatever, you know. And even if I put a game on when I'm home, I'm, it's just on. You yeah. know, I'm not really studying it. So I didn't watch a ton of ba- Baker Mayfield on TV. Yeah. And for some reason, and maybe it was me, I had this perception of him that he was kind of a runaround player, you know. And maybe it was from seeing some highlights, whatever. So then I started watching him. I always get a chance to start with guys just before the Super Bowl because we finish with our NFL matchup show. And just before I go to the Super Bowl, I get a chance to start. And I started with Mayfield because I I guess I knew he'd be polarizing based on what I had read. And I'm watching him, and I'm watching him, and I'm watching him, and I'm seeing a quarterback that's throwing from the pocket within timing. Mm -hmm. Ball's coming out, has some nice juice to it, accurate, Knew where to go. And I'm saying to myself, this guy's not a runaround guy. So then what I did was I looked at all his third down throws. Where theoretically, if, particularly if it's third and six plus, the defense has the tactical advantage. And still, they were pocket throws. And that's, so that was that's last it. February-ish. Mm-hmm. It was before I saw you guys at the Combine. Yep. Because I told you all this last yes, year at you the did. Combine. Yeah. Yep. And I said... I really like this kid. I said, and I don't remember exactly what I said. I know I said this to Colin Coward because he didn't like him. And I said, Colin. He still doesn't like no. him. No. I said, Colin, this kid's going to be a top three draft choice, I'm telling you. You know, I didn't know how it would play out, obviously. Sure, yeah. But, you know, this, this kid's a player now. And that's what sold me was watching him play with precision, with discipline from the pocket. Has, how has Colin maintained his <laughs> – dislike of Baker despite what we've seen now in the NFL and to have somebody like you you never have it what I love about the way hey, I've been you wrong present on guys too and I'll tell you when I'm wrong I mean, you will but no. the way you present information is you don't have a bias you don't have a dog no. in the fight you're saying this is what I see this draw what your I conclusions see. from yeah. it and now he's gotten to see it in the NFL and still doesn't like him I mean he's a Sam Darnold guy and then I thought Sam had a good rookie year too not as good as Baker and I think Darnold will probably be a good player um, but uh, I think Baker Mayfield has a chance to be a real star Yes, we do, we do too, and we're very happy that we don't have to worry about this. Did you see the comments this morning from uh, Kime, the general manager of Arizona? Regarding? Saying, regarding Josh Rosen saying he's our quarterback right now. For sure. Yeah, yeah, he – look, I don't like to, you know, say anything. Yeah, that's not what I do, but I will say this. In an ideal world, in a Cliff Kingsbury offense, Josh Rosen is not the quarterback that they would ideally like to build. That's what I. That's what I want to get to yeah. because you you draft you draft Rosen, 
a year ago in the first round. You fire you Steve traded Wilkes. traded up for him. Trade up to get him. You fire Steve Wilkes because it, my perception was because they wanted to get everything they could out of Rosen. Then you hire Kingsbury. And, and his offense, if they're going to try to run what he ran at Texas Tech, to your point. Well, that's all he knows. Why else? Coaches that, coach what they know. Yeah. You know who I learned that from? It's one of the great lines. Al Saunders. That's right. Oh, we love Coaches that. coach what they know. Yeah. And Cliff may be brilliant. I don't know Cliff Kingsbury. Mm-hmm. So I would never, you know, I have nothing to say about him, negative or positive. But he's basically been in one system his whole life. Right. He, he's going to coach what he knows. He may be phenomenal at it. I mean, all these young coaches, I, I root for their success because I think it's good for the league. Like, I'm really hoping Freddie Kitchens does great. It's good for the league. So do we. Yeah. But, but he's going to coach what he knows. Mm-hmm. And what he knows is that air raid offense and and various offshoots of it that's what he knows when you think about the talk that perhaps a guy like kyler murray could go as high as one overall to arizona who just drafted josh rosen and we Which don't isn't know crazy by the way i don't think so what do you think of him because i uh-huh. i always value your opinion and what do you think of him his size etc and how it fits in to me i loved him on tape um i think the only thing and it's going to be in the eye of the beholder is his size and and that is a factor because size is a trait so so there'll be some people who'll say, because my guess is he'll be five nine and three quarters, maybe five ten if he's lucky, if he gets up on his tippy toes, you know. <laughs> um, so you just have to decide how you feel about it. But I think when you watch the tape and see the talent, he's a pretty talented kid now. Do you think the success of Baker last year and before Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, you look at maybe three of the top 10, 12 quarterbacks in the league, they're all – they don't fit what used to be the size threshold. Do they don't you think fit that, the conventional, stereotypical, prototypical. Does that model. help Kyler Murray? Without question. And what also helps Kyler Murray is the changing nature of the NFL game with the influx of spread, the influx of all the, the misdirection principles that come from college to some degree, the, the kinds of things that put defenders in conflict in the NFL and help define throws for a quarterback. So a quarterback is not like the old days 20 years ago, sitting in the pocket and scanning Scanning. the field. Kyler Murray's not going to be doing that. I read something that I thought was interesting in Mel Kuyper's write-up about Kyler. He said that he's the best dual-threat prospect that he studied Uh, Maybe ever. And I remember driving to the Combine last year hearing Michael Vick talk about Lamar Jackson and saying Lamar Jackson was so far ahead of where he was coming out of college and he thought he would be good. And so to me, when I think of that, I think of a guy like Lamar Jackson. Kyler Murray's a way better thrower. That's what I want to ask you. So educate me as somebody who has not watched the tape on Kyler Murray. He is a real quarterback, a, a thrower of the football. That's what makes him, to me, such a fascinating prospect, Nathan, okay. is he's a really good thrower of the football. I mentioned, and, I put, and I'll probably put out my reports again because, you know, you it's know the best on goes. Twitter. Follow yeah. Mac, great right. Cosell. Do um, it. I made the point that he's a better thrower than Russell Wilson. Of course, I took a ton of grief for it because Russell Wilson looks like he's on his way to being a Hall of Fame type player. But I wasn't talking, I wasn't saying he's a better quarterback right now. You've probably seen Murray on TV, right? Yes. Okay. He's a very loose, smooth, fluid athlete. Uh-huh. He's an, there's an ease to his movement. He throws the ball like Pat Mahomes. Now, not, not with the same arm strength because Mahomes is a freak. But there's a looseness to Murray the way he throws it and the ball comes out with juice. Wilson's not a loose thrower. Wilson yeah. drops the ball down below yep. his waist. All the way he's got a yep. long delivery. So that's what I meant. Murray's just a better thrower, an easier thrower of the ball. And that's what makes him a fascinating prospect is, yes, he's a ridiculous athlete, but he can really throw the football. What do you think of uh, of Haskins in comparison? Very different players, obviously. Yeah. But and they'll play in different kinds of offenses. Totally different offenses. Yeah. But uh, we watch Dwayne a lot, obviously, and can make all the throws from my vantage point. I'm curious what you thought of him. Yeah, he can. He's prototypical pocket quarterback. He needs to work on his pocket movement. He's, his feet are a little wooden. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly can make the throws. Uh, played in an offense, really defined the throws, a ton of those, those mesh concepts where he hit those short crossing routes, which are very easy throws, but he certainly can push it down the field. Um, I keep being told that he's going to blow everybody away with how smart he is. You know, I've, I've talked to a number of people. His film doesn't reflect that at this point. Now, okay. he's a one-year player. Right. And that, that's okay. So was Mitchell Trubisky. You know, but now Mitchell Trubisky's really being coached by 
really, you know, good coaches. So, you know, Haskins is a good prospect. Um, in an ideal world, would I view Haskins as a top five pick in a draft, let's say? Maybe not, but okay. he's a good prospect. Would you view Murray that way? Possibly. Okay. Possibly. So interesting. And it's yeah. great, though. Guess what? I'll say it with uh, with more reverence. <laughs> we don't have to worry not about our no. yeah, not, not our problem. So what are the problem. Browns looking at this year? I mean, what, what what do you think that, you know, the needs are? I would say on the defensive side of the ball is where they're going to put their biggest assets. I think you want to get another interior pass rusher next to Larry Ogunjobi. You probably wouldn't mind another edge rusher opposite Miles Garrett to kind of push Emmanuel Ogba or be there in more well, passing Emmanuel situations. Well, Emmanuel Ogba, and it's funny. Hey, I get guys wrong just like everybody else, but when Ogba came out and he had all those sacks at Oklahoma State, when I watched him on tape, I said, he's not going to be an edge rusher in the NFL. He's going to have to move inside and sub, and that's exactly what he is. He's not an edge rusher. No, he isn't, and he hasn't been, and I think that's why. You know, yeah. Jannard Avery flashed a little bit for he us there. He did flash. Yeah. He really flashed, and I didn't know he could do that really based on his, his tape. He, he's fun to watch. Like yeah. James Harrison. He's like shot out of a cannon. Yeah. <laughs> he's a really interesting guy. Yes, he is. So I would say defensive line and then linebacker right. are probably the spots that, that we'll be looking at. And I think Are they looking for another corner opposite Ward? I would imagine you can never have enough corners. Right, right. But Terrence Mitchell, I thought, played well. But uh, if you can get another young one. And where they're picking at 17, there should be a lot of options on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, platform. there should be. What do you think the strengths are in this draft? I would say the strength through D-line and O-line. And that you know, benefits us because as, yeah. it, as, as you think about it, whether it's going to be trying to put somebody next to Larry or somebody opposite Miles, and you think about the free agent class and you think about the draft, those are the strengths of both of those are, are up front. On the How do they feel about the O-line? Well, they re-signed Greg Robinson saw to a one-year deal. Yeah. Uh, they've got Desmond Harrison, who had some potential, but obviously some issues. As a Very talented. Very talented. Very athletic. for Yeah. 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 You've got Austin Corbett backing up your interior, which is Batonio uh, Treader Zeitler, which is very good. Very good, yeah. And so maybe you're looking to add another tackle to push Harrison or replace Harrison or be a swing backup between Hubbard and, and Robinson. But that, I wouldn't say that that's a I don't think first, it's a first-round first priority. No. Yeah, yeah. No. no, I think defense is where you want to add. I think ideally you'd have another receiver that can you know complement Callaway and Landry and Higgins. But I think what Baker showed more than anything to me is that he's one of those guys that is going to throw it to who's open. And sometimes when you get that true number one that needs the ball, it complicates things. And I'll, I'll give a lot of credit to Jarvis Landry because his targets and yards actually oh, went down significantly right. over the final eight weeks, and you really you didn't hear peep about it. He was happy with the success they were Have having. you gotten to talk to and know Steve Wilkes a little bit? We, we had have. we had Just one interview. One time, yeah. So impressive. Uh, he's a great guy. Seemed And he's really tremendous. impressive. Yeah. You know, again, who knows what happened in Arizona. I mean, that's, you know. Tough situation. But he's, like. he's a really impressive guy. Yeah, and I think it says a lot about Freddie and something that Bo's talked quite a bit about that, you know, in your first year as a head coach, and he didn't really know Wilkes, didn't really know Monken, uh, and didn't really know Prefer, but they had some connections through Dorsey and they met. And to hire people of that caliber around you as a first time head coach when, you know, a lot of people think Monken's going to be a head coach in the league next right, year. Right, right. Wilkes just was. Oh, I think that says a lot about yeah. where, where Freddie's coming from. And I think Wilkes will be, I think he'll do a good job with that defense. I really do. I, th- I think we have some pieces, and yeah. like we said, you think about what we described as the biggest needs, and I don't know what you, if you right, think right. that lines up with what you saw from the Browns, but you look at the free agent class, and then you look at the draft class, they line up pretty well with what the Browns need. Right. So it, 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 could, be, it could be exciting. And what do you think of you know being here a year ago? We're talking, coming off the season, we were, here we are now, and I think you give a lot of credit, obviously, to what's happened on the field, but John Dorsey and the tone he set for this organization – uh, what do you think of just the job? I that love he's it. Done? I mean, I love it because you know Cleveland is one of those old NFL franchises that I'd like to see do well. You know, I don't have a horse in the race, but it's just they're one of those old school. You know, I'm an I'm an historian. I love the NFL, so I'd like to see Cleveland do well. I think it helps the division too to make the division really more competitive. You know, where those games ideally now could be could be Cleveland, you know, now they become a factor. Maybe some rivalries can come back and really right. mean something. And I think a guy like Baker Mayfield thrives on that. Jeez. You know, I think he'll he'll promote that in his own way because he loves that stuff. <laughs> he does. He eats Have you know. ever seen a guy, you know, the only person I can think of is Michael Jordan that just feeds off of slights perceived or right. real to motivate him quite like Baker Mayfield? I mean, I you know, I, I can't think offhand, but, but um, you know, all that's – would mean nothing if he couldn't play. Right. Yeah. Helps that he's accurate. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think that, the you know, um, I really like Nick Chubb. I think they're really set there. 
Uh, he's a good back, and I think depending on the given game, he's a guy that could carry 25 times, or he could carry 12 times, depending on what they see in a given game. Um, you know, they probably, as you mentioned, could address receiver if they chose to. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, that's it. But, it's exciting times. So plus, he's a great friend of the show. He's got to have a little. It's just a one percent Browns. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. Get, get, get <laughs> but on. I also th- agree with you. I think Baker is is a guy that is going to throw the ball. When you say throw it to, he's open. What you're essentially saying is he's going to throw it within the context of the route concept. You know, yeah, he, you right. know he's not you know he's not dropping back and saying, "Hey, well, who's open?" You know, if the route right. concept is called and it, the receiver ends up being, oh, he's going to throw it to him. It doesn't, matter. Right it doesn't matter who it is. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. This has been a real treat. Oh, yeah. it's the Thank best, you, sir. best part of the combine. Appreciate it. One yes. of the all-time greats. Great Cosell joining us. CBD eight fifty WKNR.